to understand our beautiful world and the beautiful miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kids, you guys, even me, I consider myself to be a kid a little bit. Well, I'm a bit old for a kid, but I have a kid at heart. And of course, TV, what we should be watching right now. How are you guys doing out there? I hope everybody is fine and well. As usual, I am busy putting together the last touches. Oh, 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 a few glitches here and there. Uh, the last touches on today's show. So guys, sit back and relax, because here it comes. Initiating system one. System one loaded. Assalamualaikum guys, welcome once again to do, 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 Hot Topic, the show where we talk about issues important to you. So, you're a Muslim, right? A believer in Allah and his messenger, right? But you keep hearing negative things about Islam in the news, on social media, and it can get a bit much sometimes. Yeah, even I get fed up with people talking about us in a negative way. Well, I'm here to let you know, guys. One, I... If you don't know, I'm a convert to Islam. I wasn't born Muslim. When I first encountered Islam, I was like, hmm, oh, I don't know about this thing. It sounds a bit foreign, it sounds a bit weird. But as I began to research it and look into it and read books and watch videos and talk to people, I realized that Islam is the greatest religion in the world. You don't believe me? Well, stick around and I'm gonna show you nine reasons why you should be a proud Muslim. And today's Quranic quote is, This day I have perfected for you your deen, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your deen. Surah Al-Ma'idah 5.3 Right, this one is deep, guys. You might want to get your scuba diving gear ready because we're going to get deep. It's so deep, even on my notes here, I'm like, Ooh, there's so many things I was writing, 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 writing for ages. Right, so I might have to refer to my notes on this one, okay? Reason number one, and there are probably seven million, but we've just stuck to a few, okay? Reason number one is the beautiful Quran. Our religion is based on the noble Quran. It is not a book created by man or somebody with an idea or some guys in the back room. It's a book sent down to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, by the Lord of creation, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. The Quran is the pure words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago and since that time till now not one letter, not one stroke of a pen has been changed. It has been preserved perfectly from that time to this time and Allah himself has promised that he would preserve the Quran. No other system in the world can boast this. No one can say we have what we had from then and it's exactly the same now. That is a tremendous miracle in itself. The Quran is packed with information that no one could have known at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, 
1,400 years ago, which is one over 1,400 years ago in the desert in Arabia. It talks about the fetus. It talks about the heavens and earth. It talks about the water cycle. It talks about so many things that somebody living in the desert who would never travel outside of their country could ever know. It talks about the two seas not mixing and there's a barrier between them. It talks about the past. It talks about the future. It talks about space. It talks about the earth. It even talks about things that we wouldn't even think Think about, talks about the gnat, people creating gnats. Can they create a gnat, a little fly, to show the majesty and the beauty of Allah? That a gnat, a little fly, you think it's so simple, it's just flying around. But could a human being create that? That simple thing we just ignore every day and get annoyed by, right? Could a human being create that? Not with all the technology in the world. Despite our phones, our pads, all of our technology, we couldn't even create something as simple as a gnat. This is a challenge that the Lord of creation in the Quran has set for mankind. Reason number two, oh, I love this one. Civilization and learning. I've got to read this one, guys. Okay, everywhere that Islam has gone, we have seen an explosion in education, scientific discovery and learning. Massive places like the Beit al-Hikmah, the house of wisdom in Baghdad. Everywhere Islam went, you saw scientists, you saw educators, you saw the flourishing of the sciences, whereas botany, astronomy, uh, uh, cardiology, petrochemicals, whatever the case is, wherever Islam went, it was like a, a bomb ready to blow up with education, universities in Spain, paved roads, lit streets, universities, bathhouses, on and on and on. Everywhere Islam went, you saw there was an explosion of civilization, an explosion of law and commerce and training and education. And not just that, people from all over the world would come to the Muslim lands to learn about science, philosophy, medicine, and it goes on and on. No other religion can say that they have got this kind of, I don't know what to describe it as, as this ability to, 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 to get the human being to think, to look at nature, to discover, to find things, to make things that benefit mankind. It's a miracle in itself. Reason number three why you should be a proud Muslim is because Islam is very, very simple. You don't need a degree to know that there's one God. You don't need a degree or some kind of science qualification to know that the prophet is the last prophet. When I first became Muslim, one of the things that really opened my eye to it and made me think, wow, this is beautiful, is that Islam is the religion from the very beginning. Stretches all the way back to Adam and includes all of the classic poets. Ibrahim, uh, Noah, David, Solomon, Jesus, peace be upon all of them. It was something that was sent from time to time over the different generations and was culminated and completed in the final message in the Quran re revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. That for me was like, wow, I thought this was a weird, different religion from over there somewhere. But when I start to read the Quran and read about the religion itself, I realized that there is so much connectivity between now and all the way back to Adam. Reason number four is that Islam is a religion of peace and a religion of tolerance. I'll give you an example. In Muslim Spain, remember the Muslims conquered Spain and lived there for eight hundred years. Yes, we had places of education. Yes, we had amazing buildings and stuff like that as well. But we also were tolerant to other faiths as well. We allowed Christians, Jews, Zoroastrians to have their own legal system, to live in their own places, free from any harassment. We didn't tell them what to do. We didn't boss them around. As long as they paid the jizya towards us that would protect them, that they wouldn't have to pay more than what we pay for the zakat. As long as that was happening, and the overall umbrella was Islam. They were allowed to have their own court systems, uh, sort out their own divorces, their own family law, and Islam would leave them alone to do things of that nature. There is no other system that allows that kind of level of freedom and tolerance for other religions, other systems beside itself. Reason number five why you should be a proud Muslim is the rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given mankind rights and even rights upon him. We have also given rights to trees, to the earth, to animals, to men, 
to women. We have rules of engagement for war. You can't cut down trees. You can't fight non-combatants. You can't uh, destroy churches and synagogues and temples. We have given rights to every every uh, facet of creation inshallah I should say Allah has given rights to every facet of creation to make sure that they can live in peace in the way that they see fit without us having to harass them or tell them what to do or say you should follow our way we allowed them to do that and they were able to flourish in their own right there was a very famous Jewish scholar called Maimonides uh, in Muslim Spain and he was one of the greatest uh, Jewish thinkers at the time and he said the tolerance that they experienced in uh, Muslim Spain was unparalleled and after the King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella expelled all the Muslims the Jews decided to go with the Muslims and go down to North Africa and live with them because they realized that they were given their rights they were able to flourish and um, uh, have their own system as I mentioned before it's a fantastic a fantastic system that they were experiencing Reason number six why you should be a proud Muslim is because of the concept of zakat or charity or sadaqah in Islam. That, that continual reminder in the Quran and something we really experience, especially during Ramadan, to give, to help, to feed orphans, to make sure that we can look after people thousands of miles away in different countries, it's um, a fact that particularly in the UK, the group of people that give more in charity are Muslims. Muslims give more in charity than any other community or civilization living within the UK at the moment. There are many initiatives that we can involve ourselves in, whether it's orphans, whether it's building wells, shelters, looking after the homeless. There are so many Muslim charities that are involved in doing that sort of thing that we can get involved in and to help make the world a better place. The concept of charity is so high in Islam. Sometimes when when me and my wife go out to a charity, she always gives. I know we haven't got any money, but she finds a way. She'll call her family up. She'll call her friends up. You give me 20 pounds, you give me 20 pounds, you give me. And before you know it, she's got like a thousand pounds that she'll give to the charity, no matter what charity it is. Because this idea of charity has been instilled and ingrained in the entire ummah to give, to give, to give, to give. And that is amazing. And reason number seven why you should be a proud Muslim. We follow the sunnah of the greatest man who ever lived. You know who I'm talking about, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This man, if you have not as yet read his life story, then you need to get a book, go online, do whatever you have to do to learn about the life of this man. Because as I said, as, when I first became Muslim, yeah, I read video, I watched videos, I saw books, I spoke to people. But the impact of reading about his life was immense upon me. The struggles he went through and how he was still given, still forbearing, still kind to people, treating people with honor and dignity. And no matter what was happening to him, he was always a perfect gentleman to everyone. Even in the masjid, people pull in his clothes, people are uh, weeing in the masjid, he wouldn't get upset with them. He would give in charity, give in charity, give in charity. Never once did he exploit or abuse his power. He didn't live in a huge palace, didn't have tons of servants. He lived very simply in a very small hut, sleeping upon a, 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 a bed of bamboos. He didn't, sometimes he was hungry and if he had food he would give it away, he would give it away, he would give it away, give it away. The example of the Prophet Muhammad is what we all try to emulate, what we all try to reach because that example is the paramount, the paramount example in how we should be as human beings to ourselves, to our relations, to our friends, to the planet and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, there you go guys, only seven, there are many more. Seven reasons why you should not be ashamed of your deen. Do not be ashamed of being Muslim and standing firm for the deen of Islam. No other system, and I'm throwing this out as a challenge, no other system can match what I've said here today, even those seven. Nothing 
nothing, there is nothing out there that is even remotely close to Islam with all the rights they're given, the scientific discovery, the civilization, the house of learning, all of that, not to mention the Quran itself, the life of the Prophet, his example, it got, the list goes on and on and on. So if you are on social media, you say, oh, they say horrible things about the Prophet, peace be upon him, and horrible things about Islam. Don't fall for it. Do not believe the hype, as they used to say, okay? You just stay firm to the rope of Allah. Make sure you're doing your namaz. Make sure you're doing your salah. If Ramadan comes around and you're able to fast a few days at least, maybe a bit young, have a go at that as well. Engage. Make sure you go to the masjid. Make sure you go to events as much as possible. Hang out with Muslims. You know what I mean? Do those things that we have been commanded by the Lord of creation to do and make sure we stay firm on this deed. Right, guys, once again, thank you so much for checking us out here on Hot Topic. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, this is the email address. There you go, do, 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 info at ikra.tv. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. It's me, Nosy Alien, in between taking time out to take over your planet, I like watching Ikra Kids TV! My turn, 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 my Oh, well, my arms really hurt me now. I know, I know, but don't worry, it's good exercise. We should always do exercise to keep ourselves happy and fit. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome once again. Have you ever heard of the word evolution? Mm, bit of a tongue twister that one, evolution. It's been talked about for the last hundred years or maybe even more. So I'm sure you may have heard about the word evolution. Usually it's to do with fossils, monkeys, mutation, adaptation, things changing from one type of an animal into another type of animal. Mm, so does it ring any bells for you? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about on our Smile to Jenna video because we want to give you guys a good understanding of what does it actually mean in the wider world and what does it mean for us as Muslims? Hmm, did we come from monkeys? Oh, that's an interesting question. You probably might have thought about that or you might have heard somebody talk about that. <laughs> I'm glad you have been thinking about it because we want to show this amazing video for you guys right now. Oh, smile to Jenna, guys. You've done another fantastic video. So, guys, check out this video. Pay close attention. They're going to drop a lot of interesting information that we need to know as Muslims. So, guys, are you ready for it? Let's see it now. There are two reasons why Muslims don't have to change their beliefs to fit Darwinian evolution. Number one, science does not lead to certainty. And number two, Darwin's theory of evolution is not indisputable. So Darwinian evolution can be accepted by Muslims as a valid theory, but not something absolutely true. The first thing we need to do is make a distinction between basic evolution and Darwin's theory of evolution. Yeah? Basic evolution is biological change over time. Darwinian evolution 
is composed of two parts. Number one, the tree of life, and number two, natural selection. The basic type of evolution is simply true. Yeah, It happens all around us. Take butterflies or bacteria evolving resistance to medicine and numerous other examples. Yeah, No one disagrees with this type of biological evolution. <laughs> but get this, this was well known before Darwin. Yes, before Darwin. It's the second type which is problematic, which requires more evidence yeah, for the tree of life and natural selection other than mere observations. Yeah, But sadly, people confuse the two types together and assume proof for the former is proof for the latter. And this is not to mention some of the problems with regards to Darwinian evolution. Number one, no matter how successful a scientific theory is, it can always be changed and challenged due to new observations and interpretations. Philosophy of science teaches us that there is no absolute concrete proof for any scientific theory. Number two, the tree of life is based on the idea of homology, which is the assumption that two species with similar genes and anatomy have evolved from a common ancestor. Left as it is, it's just an assumption, not a conclusion based on evidence. Yet there is a problem, homeoplasy. Homeoplasy is the observation of similarities which cannot be due to common ancestry. Number three, gradualism. Darwin assumed evolution takes place in small, slight steps. This assumption is an essential part of Darwin's theory. In fact, he actually said that this is like a falsification condition to his entire framework. But the fossil record shows the exact opposite. Rapid changes in biological features also. Number four, selfishness. Darwinism assumes that the only reason for our existence is to selfishly care for our own survival and reproduction. But it doesn't explain why many people give charity anonymously, why governments collect taxes for hospitals to help survival of the unfittest, why people care about animals, ancient buildings and are willing to die for their values and ideals. Number five, some notable biologists and philosophers have pointed out that there is propaganda about Darwinism and they see it being pushed as an undeniable reality when it is far from it. In fact, some have even labelled Darwinism as a religion due to the activities of Darwinists. In addition to this, Darwinism isn't even the only theory of evolution. Yeah. In fact, let me just give you three alternatives. Number one, evolution by natural genetic engineering. Number two, Neo-Lamarckian evolution. And number three, mutation driven evolution. What was the point of all this? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you that this theory is invalid. Yeah, It's still the main scientific theory to explain biological change. And also the majority of biologists also subscribe to it. Mentioning the disagreements above is done only to show that Darwinism is not an eternal truth set in stone as some may have us believe. So how can this be reason enough to make Muslims change their beliefs about the Creator and the Quran's view of the creation of mankind? SubhanAllah, if like me you have heard of evolution and you hear about monkeys and things changing and Darwin and all these different things as well, I'm sure this video would have helped clear up a lot of the mystery. What does it mean? Why do they have to use such big words anyway? <laughs> Let us use tiny words so we can all understand it. Well, in order for us to understand what they're talking about, we have to understand some of these words that they use. Adaptation, mutation, etc, etc, etc. So I'm glad that the brothers at Smart to Jenna have broken it down in such an easy way for us to understand and to really get our heads around what does it all mean, especially for us as Muslims. Guys, we want to make sure you never miss any of our shows here on Ikra Kids TV. We've got so much more goodies in store for you. So, we'll see you soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. And another 
show out the way, guys. I hope you guys are really, really enjoying it. Now, remember, if there's anything you'd like us to do to talk about on our hot topics or any arty thing you'd like us to do on the Random Studio, all you need to do is send me an email on this address. And if you haven't been to our website, that's the website address. And of course, our Instagram. Go over there as well. Whatever you guys want to send in, pictures, drawings, whatever the case is, we're definitely going to put them on our Instagram page, but you've got to send it in first. So make sure you go over there right now, guys. Anyway, thanks for joining us once again. Take care of yourself. Salam Alaikum. TV.